Hello, my friends. Hi, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the Dixie Bell Chalk Mineral Paint page. My name is Angela. I am the owner and creative energy of uh, Elfen und Helden. And uh, I welcome you over here to me uh, in Frankfurt in uh, Germany. And uh, I'm very happy you're joining me tonight uh, during this crazy time out there. The best thing to do is, um, well, do some creative things, do some painting and stuff like that. So I'm very happy you're joining me. So and I hope you're all well and your families are well. And when you tune in, just let me know where you're watching from. I'll be happy to, to see that. And um, I'll be also happy if you check my page out and uh, if you leave me a like and maybe if you follow me. Hi Nana, hi from to Florida. Uh, I've just seen you on the other page also. I just finished the other live on the um, Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast page. So I'm happy you're joining me here too. Um, guys, <clears throat> last week uh, we talked about um, uh, prepping a piece and uh, putting some, um, uh, when you use boss and when you use slick stick and uh, do you use bows and stuff like that. And we started with, um, a typical um, product which is the for a boss is like a, a wooden um, pine wood box because pine wood uh, is uh, one of those typical woods which likes to bleed through and especially this one this one you can see this this one came like this it's like burnt uh, wood I bought it like this and uh, basically um, what they do with this wood, they put like flames over it and what reacts to the flames and burns um, are the wood ingredients and they are likely to bleed through uh, your paint later on. And we also done a glass table. I'll just show you quickly, I finished that off. This is the glass table. Basically that was the, the top, that was glass and uh, it was uh, slick sticked. And afterwards I put some chalk mineral paint on and some and the transfer. So and basically and I also painted the back because obviously through glass you could see the white from the slick stick, so I painted it with mermaid tail on the back also. So that's the top. And the bottom, which was metal, um, this was also slick stick. I've done it off the video. This is the bottom, and I've made my own rose copper with the Dixie Bell, um, with the Dixie Bell Moonshine Metallics. And I painted it with copper because I love copper. Who else loves copper? Leave, leave a heart if you, if you love copper just as much as I do. I'm hoping Dixie Bell is uh, going to um, do that color eventually. I've still got my glue standing around here from the... So, and today we are going to continue with that um, wooden box and I'd like to show you, this was painted twice with, um, with Farmer's Green by Dixie Bell and it was um, painted twice with clear boss beforehand. And as you can see, there is not one spot coming through. That is absolutely brilliant. And guys, I've, I've painted those last year for my kitchen or two years ago for my kitchen. And um, obviously there was no Dixie Bell over here and I used um, a, uh, another product and it was driving me nuts. I've put about four coats of that product on there. I've put four coats of paint on there. And there was like still things coming through. So I love this. Thank you Dixie Bell for that. That is absolutely fantastic. I love Boss. Okay, if you want to check out Boss, just go and uh, check out my video from last week. Um, uh, I explain everything about it. And today what we are going to do, we are going to do some, well, some dry brushing. I've got, um, for this, just like to age it up a little bit, you know, to bring out um, some details of that wood. I've got, uh, for this, I've got uh, colored greens, which I'm going to use, which is a nice dark, like muddy green which i really really like and i'm going to use fluff for that and the stenciling we're going to do i've got this um this stencil this is one product you're not getting on the dixie bell page because uh, that's one of my own uh, stencils you can get from me then basically so um, 
I made it myself and I cut it out myself. So this is what I'm going to use on the on the side of the of this uh, wooden box. I've got also for the dry brushing. I've got my favorite brush from Dixie Bell, which is the Dixie Bell Mini, and I am using for each color a separate brush. That's what I always do. Uh, for this, I don't need the Mr. Buffer because for dry brushing, I want to have it pretty dry. And for the stenciling, I'm just using like a, like a stencil brush, just like this. You know, there's. Um, I also got the bigger one when I have big projects. I use a, a big uh, stencil brush. I've got something like this. This is originally more like um, like a waxing brush, but it's got a nice flat top, so that uh, works pretty well for stenciling also. Okay, guys, let's go. When you tune in, just let me know where you're watching from and um, just tell me what you're doing the whole time and uh, if you have to work home office or if you are still allowed to go to work and what's happening around the area. I know this is from country to country, pretty different at the moment. Over here, my shop is uh, closed. Everything's closed down. I'm still doing the shipping. Um, shipping works normal till now while I know that some of the countries uh, already reduced down the shipping also. I know that from some of my companies um, it's, um, it's, pretty, it's a pretty serious situation but uh, guys there's nothing we can do about it at the moment so please do what the people or what the government tells you to do. Stay inside, stay away from other people and uh, make your home beautiful. You know just grab everything you can paint, grab some paint, grab some brushes and just paint. That makes you happy. Believe me, trust me, trust me. Okay, dry brushing. Dry brushing means, um, you, I'm out of the, the picture now, but uh, you want to see the project and you don't want to necessarily see me. I've got, um, I've got uh, one of those uh, mats from, uh, from Ikea because I want to offload my brush a little bit. When you dry brush, you want to have your brush almost uh, hardly any paint on. I'm going to start with some um, color greens and I'm going to open it up. There we go. And this is that green. Can you see that? I just love that. Yeah, exactly. Hi, Maria. Hi, Rosa. Minnesota, California. How's the weather over there? How's the weather with you? I mean, this is, uh, I think it's uh, quite different all over the US from one coast to the other. Over here, we have uh, since about like 10 days, 12 days, we've got the most beautiful weather. Um, yeah, and there's really not much you can do with it at the moment. So dip your brush. I always use the brush, um, the paint out of my lid because there's also quite a bit of paint in the lid. Don't waste it, use it because um, and I just put like a little on there and I'm offloading it on the on this mat because I want to have hardly any any paint on there and then I'm gonna go with a very very light hand very light hand over it and you see how that um, gets the details out can you already see that difference it makes? Oh, hello to Ireland. So, just a very light hand. When it's offloaded, you can go a bit more heavy on it. I always start with a very light hand, just in case there's still a lot of paint on there. So, just do it like this. Go to the side, do well, I can still use some of the paint of the which are offloaded on the mat. And uh, hi, Dana. <laughs> oh, yes, long time no see. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> so, very light hand, just go over it. I'm just gonna bring that close, maybe a little closer to you. You can see how that um, brings out the those details from the wood a little basically what I want to achieve because it um, is supposed to look like a little aged. I don't want to have it too rusty but it can look like a little aged. And I need a little more paint now. Just a little. 
offloaded um, high powder, high to Oklahoma. So, who from you has used Dixie Gold paints before? Who has used Dixie Gold paints? And um, just tell me your favorite color also. So, just very light hand, just go over it. When you feel you've offloaded most of the paint, you can go a little heavier to um, get all the paint out of the brush. And you can do that, you know, as heavy as you like to have it, you know. You can go across also if you want to have some heavier streaks on there. But I basically just like to enhance the wood grain a little bit. And I'm still working with the paint from the lid. And you can see that like the all the high points when you do dry brushing, all the high points are taking um, taking up the paint. Go around the corners like this. When you use when you do dry brushing, you are um, basically enhancing the high points, and when you do waxing, you enhancing the low points. You know because you're putting the wax on or glazing also. You're putting the, the glaze on or the wax on and then you wipe it back and it stays in the in the low points. And with dry brushing you're enhancing the high points. So just like to enhance the corners also. You can see the difference, you know, to to before. You can see the wood grain a little more. Oh Stormy sees is a lovely colour, yes. Um, <laughs> exactly, Theresa. It's uh, impossible to have one favorite color. That's uh, that's the same for me. You know, every time I start a project, um, I'm like, um, oh, I'm oh, I'm gonna do like a bit of the blues. Or oh, maybe I'm gonna go do the pinks. Oh, I think the reds are quite nice also. <laughs> very very difficult. They're all so pretty. And the nice thing is, you know, the Dixie Bell has got that many colors. You know, you can. Um, you really have the choice, you know, it's not, you don't have to mix and stuff like that yourself, you really have a, a great choice, which means if you want to redo it, you have the same color again, you know, there's always the trouble when you do mix your own color, which you obviously you can do, you can mix all the colors together, I'm doing that also, but um, it's always the trouble then when you, when you do that, that uh, if you don't write it down, and even if you write it down, um, you know, it might turn out a little different the next time. Oh, that was a bit heavy. There was no light hand, but even so, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be a rustic look anyway. Go a bit around the corners. And I'm also going to do that with the white just to get some, some different shades up there. I don't want to have it just like plain and that green. That's the idea we want to have. You can, um, you can also distress, but um, the thing is when you distress um, a bossed piece you and you go down to the wood, uh, you have the possibility that uh, it bleeds through again, obviously, because uh, you go through the um, through the boss down to the wood, and then the wood can has a chance again to to bleed through. So if you if you do that, if you distress, um, especially with something like that, you know, if you wet distress, it's um, it's okay. Then you can have a bit more control. But uh, wet distressing something like this, uh, oh, it's not. I don't want to get any splints in my fingers, so I'm not uh, wet distressing. I would either either sand it or um, just age it like this. You know, you can go around the corners and just like do it like this. So. The nice thing about uh, dry brushing is also that um, the paint is almost dry when it goes on there, so you know don't need um, to. There is no long drying time. But what I do now, because there is some paint on that brush, uh, I might come back to it later. So I'm not going to put it in the water yet, but I'm going to put a baby wipe around it. 
and I'm going to wet that baby wipe also and I shall put it so it's not really um, uh, it's not really soaking the brush now but it's uh, keeping like uh, uh, um, keeping it moist so the paint does not dry on your brush because whoever worked with short mineral paints you don't uh, really have to prep your pieces uh, and uh, this shows with those brushes it uh, really stays on there hi Sonja hi to Croatia hi to Zagreb how are you doing over there how are you you had an earthquake the other day also, didn't you? I mean, what a nightmare. You know, there's like not only the one thing going on, as if, as if this wouldn't be enough already, you're having an earthquake on top. So, the world is just mad. Hi, Terry. Thank you for watching, guys. So, um, even if you watch replay, just let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to see that and uh, I also be very happy if you go over to my page uh, Elfen und Helden and leave me a like there. For us artists, that is very important, you know, that we can keep creating content for you guys. And uh, also, when you um, when I continue continue some projects and stuff like that, you get informed then. So again, this is uh, fluff, um, which is a nice nice white, and. Um, Again, just use the paint out of your lid. Just dip it lightly in there. You know, this is far too much paint, so I'm going to offload it on the mat. You could also use whatever, a cloth or a rag or something like that. I've got this mat because I can clean it off afterwards. And, um, and then I'm going to do the same thing, light hand. Just, but only in certain areas where I wanna have it. I just want to have um, just like some colors slightly, so it's not like just a plain, just a plain farmhouse green. That's what I want to do on here. And it's just like little, just little different shades on there. We've got a colored green, we've got a farmhouse green underneath and so we're going to put a stencil on top then. Just very lightly. We're going to hardly see it but this is just giving it like the the dirty used just in random. I'm just going to put it on in ran random spots. So it's just, it just looks like it's been, um, yeah, it's been like handed around and uh, being used quite a bit. There's no, there's just no, no, no plan to it, like uh, that you have to go there or there or there. This is just like uh, putting it on, I or was on this side. Same here. Just dab it on there, have it a bit heavier, so because otherwise you won't see the white. That's, 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 that's this side. Gonna go on the back. And as I said, there is no drying time whatsoever, the chalk mineral paints. Um, Firstly, the nice thing is you don't really need to prep your pieces apart from when you have like a bleeder or something like that, then it's recommended unless you use a very dark color and you don't mind the, the bleed coming through. Um, uh, apart from that, you don't really have to prep your pieces. You can put that uh, chalk mineral paint from Dixie Bell right over it. So I'm going to put that also into a bag. Keep it a little moist and the paint not to dry on the on the bristles because when it's dry it's uh, pretty difficult to, to get it off again. Just stamping it up a little bit so it's staying moist. And if you for example 
I mean, this is just dry brushing. I'm going to wash them out uh, when I'm finished here, you know. But sometimes when you have like a bigger piece where you put the first coat on and you continue the next day, um, those brushes from Dixie Bell, they hold really well the paint, you know, which is really good because with one, with one dip in the paint, you can basically paint quite a bit uh, of the surface, which is really nice and easy. So, now, you come to stenciling, make sure you've got it the right way around. <laughs> so, this is what it's going to be like. This is going to go on there. And again, I'm going to eyeball it, how it goes on there. I've got my tape, just like some painter's tape. I'm going to tape it down a little bit. When you do stenciling, there's... Um, Guys, and everything I'm telling you, everything I'm telling you and I'm doing here, it's not that I'm saying this is like God's given way to do it. This is the way I do it. It's, there's loads of ways um, to paint uh, and, and stuff like that. And everybody has got like his own, um, his own technique or his own preferences and stuff like this, you know. What I want to do is just, give you an idea, you know, and um, if you have, if you do it different, if you have a better idea, um, feel free to, to say that, you know, I mean, I also love to hear um, other people techniques and stuff like that, you know, this is, and also I love to try out things, um, because sometimes, you know, you do it in a way and then you find, oh God, you know, why haven't I done it like whatever, Mary or some, somebody like that, who is, um, doing it much better, you know, but I hope I'm, I can give you some ideas and give you some inspiration on that. So if you, if you want to have um, a nice and crisp, uh, a nice and crisp line around, what you should do is either you um, do the first coat of stenciling with some sort of clear coat because then the clear coat is bleeding underneath and then you can, when you come back with your, with your paint from stenciling, um, it, will, um, it will basically not bleed under the, under, the, under the stencil. Or what you can do, you use the, you use the, the paint which is underneath, which would be the farmer's green for example, uh, and uh, you do the first coat with the farmhouse green and then you put the stencil on and then you put no, then you put the the paint color on for stenciling because then the farmhouse green would have bleeded underneath and um, also then the other paint is uh, it's going to seal the edges basically off and the other paint is not bleeding underneath but with this uh, this wooden box you know this is uh, rough anyway, and um, I don't mind if uh, if there is some bleeding underneath. Yeah, I've seen the pictures. They were quite um, there. There was it was quite strong over there. Um, you just see me. I've moved the I moved the stencil a little bit because um, like the top from the F finished off in the in this uh, gap here, and. Uh, then it probably would have gone. So I want to have the, the F that you can still read that there is the F. Oh God. Yeah, well, I mean, the world is just mad. Guys, you just, you just stay safe. You know, the world is mad at the moment. So for stenciling, I thought I'm going to use um, coffee bean, but I'm going to use um, caviar because I like stencils in black. And caviar is the darkest color from Dixie Bell. Um, let's see, rest a little bit. I've mixed them before, but I'm gonna mix it again because I've um, checked the lids before I started uh, because I'm a very messy painter and I keep forgetting putting um, some plastic around or something like that so it's not... Um, so it's not sticking too too much onto the thing. So that's a, a very a very nice uh, dark, the darkest color basically caviar. It's a nice deep black. Chalk mineral paint in nice deep black. It really covers very, very well. And with stenciling also, um, 
for a stencil brush always take a brush with uh, with a flat top you can use air sponges with something like that so you can use also and uh, hi sally thank you for tuning in and um, uh, you always use very little paint almost like with dry brushing so you just dip it in there and again i'm going to offload it um, on here so that there's hardly any any paint left because the less paint you have on your brush um, the less paint can bleed under your under your um, stencil so and then you just go go over it in a dabbing motion stencils um, they are non-sticky so you can reuse them they can be washed afterwards and um, I know Ixibel has got uh, some those stick and style stencils from um, from Prima they work great also Paint. Put it on the side here. And always offload it, and then you can go over your project in a dabbing motion, just following up the the letters and all the and all the. I'm gonna use my other hand so you can see better. afterwards and you can reuse um, the stencil I'm using here. For the guys over here in Europe, that's one of my stencils. So you can get that from, from me if you're interested. And they can also do you some your own stencils if you have um, a certain idea or something like that because I cut them also myself. I'm pretty flexible with that. Yes, Terry, I love caviar also. I mean, it's like one of the colors I love. It's, um, they're all so pretty and they're all, yeah, they're all, you can do so many different uh, projects and different looks and stuff like that, which is absolutely amazing. So I really love those colors and they're so easy to work with, which is really the nicest thing. And uh, you can use them indoors, especially, you know, now with people supposed to stay at home and um, having the kids at home, you know, you can use it together with your kids. Obviously, don't leave them alone with it, but you can use this um, together with your kids, you know, this, those paints are VOC free, they've got no smell to them, you can use them indoors, you know, there's... Um, so, I'm going to go over it uh, a second time also. And as this paint dries really quick, which is another benefit of those chalk mineral paints, um, it really speeds up your, your project because it dries so quickly. It's, um, you can basically go over it a second time straight away. probably heard about ray stenciling which also um, gives a great uh, yeah, look to your to your project projects um, and the ray stenciling which I think uh, doesn't really suit a project like this but uh, on some projects ray stenciling is really pretty also and then you use obviously that with either sea spray you mix the colors with sea spray to get a paste or you can use um, a Dixie Bell mud you can do ray stenciling which works with a stencil like this also you know there's it's not a, a, a special stencil you need for that you can do that uh, also with uh, a stencil like this it works really good and also 
also with the stick and style stencils or if you have stencils from um, uh, from IOD or something like that, they work really nicely. So, almost finished. And then I shall reveal the juicy layer. And as I said, if you don't want to have the bleed through, you know, um, you can seal it off firstly, first coat with the paint color on the knees, <clears throat> which probably wouldn't be very nice with this project because uh, I've already done some dry brushing underneath so that uh, you would see then the corners again. Um, but then you can probably use uh, a clear coat or something like that to see it off. Some people use Mod Podge. I'm not a fan of Mod Podge, but some people love it. Um, again, you know, this is personal preference. Um, I think the nice thing with the Dixie Bell products is, you know, you have like the products you can use for a lot of um, purposes, you know, you have, you have your, your top coat for sealing off something and you can use the top coat also to seal off the, the corners of your, of your stencil, so that's nice. Yes. South Carolina, very nice. I hope you've put down your weather where you're at. I'm gonna go through it later. I would love to see some sunshine in your areas also. So, that's it. Put that to the side. When you lift your stencil up, be careful that you don't. Um, well, that's another thing. The first the first stencil I've done with, with Dixie Bell paint, <laughs> I was so worried, you know, because I had that before, you know, you, you lift the tape up and you've got like half the paint on your tape, you know, <laughs> the first, the first stencil I've done, I was like over the moon that that didn't happen. So big reveal. There we go. There we go. What do you think? That's the stencil. So, and I think black goes really nice with that. Do you like it? What do you think? So, if you like it, leave me some hearts, please. Have you guys done some stenciling before? Hallo, Silke. <laughs> oh, there are some German people on here also. I like that. Okay, guys. So... I think um, I wrapped that up for today. Uh, oh, hello, my chats. Deckel Money, that's my sweetheart. He is also watching. We had a quite funny story last week um, when I was on the Chalk Middle Paint Enthusiast page, and um, he doesn't speak English. <laughs> And as he is my biggest fan, obviously, he wanted to leave a comment and uh, he couldn't because he hadn't joined that group. So he tried to join the group, but obviously there come, some, come up some questions. <laughs> he, just, he just didn't know what the questions were. He just like writing down just something, you know. And um, I think, uh, I think uh, Dixie Bell and the people around Dixie Bell know him by now. <laughs> They just let him in, in, you know, just saying, oh, you know, <laughs> poor him, just, just let him join. <laughs> so I thought that was quite funny. Danke, Anja. Okay, guys, um, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, again, when you watch replay, when you tune in later, and also for the people who um, tuned in uh, not uh, from the beginning, this video will be up on the Dixie Bell page and you can watch it later and uh, highly appreciate if you pop over to my page and leave me a like there. Um, ring, um, hit the bell so you get noticed when I come up and do some lives and um, so um, I would love to see you, see you there. Um, again, I'm a primary retailer for Dixie Bell over here in Frankfurt in uh, Germany and um, I've got uh, in the comments uh, um, basically locked on top of this uh, video um, there is uh, the link to the Dixie Bell page where you can check for your local retailer and uh, 
if you haven't got a local retailer uh, in Europe, I'd be happy to help you out. I ship throughout Europe and shipping still works normal. So um, I'd be happy to help you out. And maybe I can even find you your, your local retailer if you, if you can't do it yourself. Um, okay, guys. Um, hello, Olga. Okay, I shall check your, um, I see the Spanish, my Spanish is not very well, but I, I will check on the, the questions uh, uh, in a minute and uh, I'll get you an answer to that, uh, even if it's a language I don't speak. I'm sure I can sort it out. Guys, I thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you stay safe, uh, look after yourself, look after your loved ones. Um, you know, I've done the shopping for my dad yesterday and brought it around his place. Um, I mean, it, it lives quite a bit away from me, but uh, still close enough that I can do that. Uh, so, because I don't want him to get out of the house at the moment, which is very important. You know, keep the elderly people and the sick people um, safe and um, keep yourself safe and your whole family. Look after yourself, guys. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I really appreciate that. I love having you around me. And um, Dixville, thank you for having me on your page. Um, that's a great pleasure for me. I'm very proud uh, to do that. And I'll see you next week. Till then, stay healthy. And uh, I'll be on this week probably a couple of times uh, to do some more things, keep busy and um, showing you different projects you can do around the house. Take care. Bye-bye. Ta-da. Bye, guys. Bye.